for this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning and happy Sunday to all of you and welcome to our live broadcast of Sunday service here at Park Avenue Missionary Baptist Church where the Reverend L.E. Campbell is pastor. Amen. We pray that all of you are safe as this coronavirus pandemic continues. Please remain safe. We thank our Lord that we can connect in this manner. We give praises to God for this opportunity and this broadcast. With that being said, we will have a short devotion this morning. We'll have a sung glory to his name, led by our chairman, amen. Down at the cross where my Savior died. Down where for cleansing from sin I cried. There to my heart was the blood applied. I'm singing glory to his name. Glory to his name, for it was there to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. Now I am so one. So sweetly abides within there at the cross where he took me in. I'm singing glory to his name. We're singing glory to his name. Precious name, singing glory to his name, for it was there to my heart, was a blood of life. Glory to his name. Come mountain so rich and sweet cast thy poor soul at the Savior's feet will plunge in today and be made complete I'm singing glory
And good morning, all. Good morning. We pray all is well with you. Our scripture lesson comes this morning from the 19th Psalm, beginning at the seventh verse. And it reads, the law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The rules of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold, sweeter also than honey, and drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, be warned by, moreover by them is your servant warned. In keeping them, there is great rewards. In the 14th verse, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. Amazing grace, how sweet the Praise God, 
Father God, we come this morning giving you all the praise. We give you all the glory and all the honor. Yes, yes. Lord. For you are worthy yes, of sir. all the praise. Yes, sir. We thank you, Lord, for doing all that you have done and what you continue to do. Yes. We thank you, Lord, that you gave up your crown for our soul. Thank you, Lord. We thank you that we have a right to the tree of life in you. Praise you, Lord. We give you glory, Lord. We give glory. you honor for you yes, are worthy yes, yes. of our praise today. Yes, sir. As the song say, we praise God. Yes. We give you all the ownership to our beings, Lord, and we just thank you for what you have done thus far. Praise you, Lord. We thank you for our ups and we thank you for our downs. Thank we thank you, you for our in betweens, but most of all, we just thank you. Thank you. We Lord. thank you for our coming and our going, yes, Lord, because yes. it is you who sustains us and who yes, holds us. Yes. It is you who keeps us in the palm of your hand. Praise you, Lord. And we give you glory for that. We thank you. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. We have thank praises you. upon our lips to thank you. If we can do nothing else, we say thank you, Lord. Yes, yes. A thousand tongues, we would have enough to say it. Praise but we say father. thank you, thank, thank you. you, thank you, Lord. Then, Lord, we come praying for those who know you not in the pardon of their sins today. We pray that something be said, did, or done, that they may come running saying, what must I do to be in the family? Lord, praise your name. Lord, we pray for our pastor as yes, he is on Lord, vacation. We ask Lord. that you will keep him safe, keep him strong. Yes, Lord. Give him strength to fight this battle yes, longer yes, and longer yes, and yes, longer. Yes. We know that he's in your hands, and we just thank you for him and his will and his spirit. We thank you for Park Avenue. We yes, pray Lord. for each member that you will touch. Touch, Lord. You Jesus know what they stand in need of, Lord. Yes. You know what they need and what they don't need. Yes, Lord. We thank you for those things you have bestowed upon us, and we thank you for those things you kept away from yes, us. Lord. We give you glory. Glory, Because you are God all by yourself. Oh, yes. We thank you for those thank who you. stand in their stead and do what you have told them to do, yes, Lord, Lord, here on this earth. Yes, Father. Lord, we pray for our leaders of this world. Help, Lord. Touch them, Lord. They need you in a special yes, way. Yes, Give sir. them guidance. Yes, Give them direction. Yes, sir. That they may do what you say to yes, do sir. and not what man tells them to yes, do. Yes, yes. We depend on you, Lord, for guidance and not man. Yes, Lord. Lord, we pray for our musical staff. Continue to bless them, Touch, use Lord, them, that they Jesus might sing Lord. Zion's songs. Yes, Lord. We pray for our associate ministers. Yes, we pray for yes, every ministry yes, here yes, at Park yes, Avenue Missionary Baptist yes, Church. Lord. We ask that you will give us the power to do what you have called us to do, and we'll be so careful to give you all the praise and all the glory. We pray for those who are in a down state today, Lord. Yes, we ask that you will yes, lift them yes, up, raise yes, their heads. Yes, please, Father. Give them strength to us to fight mm -hmm. the fight, Lord. We pray that you will hear our cry. We pray that you will answer our, pry, our cry, and we pray that you will give us the will and the way that you would have us to Touch do Lord, and Jesus the will that you would have us to go. Yes, Lord. And we'll be so careful to give you all the glory all and all the, the honor. We pray for our families. Yes, we sir. pray for our loved ones. Yes, sir. Lord, we pray for those who know you not again in the pardon of their sin. That's what it's about, that they may come running to you and that we may do something that you have told us to do to teach your word, preach your word, and then bring them into the house of the faithful. This is our prayer this morning. We ask that you will hear our prayer in Jesus' Jesus name. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I am on the 
battlefield for my Lord. I am on the battlefield for my, my Lord, for my Lord. And I promised him that I, I would serve him till I die. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. I was alone in idol, and I was a sinner too. But I heard the voice from heaven saying, There is work to do. As I trust, He appoints my soul a place. I am on the battlefield. For my Lord, oh yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord, oh I am on the battlefield for my Lord, for my Lord, and I promise him that I would serve him till I die. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. Now I left my friends and kindred bound for the promised land. The grace of God upon me, the Bible in my hand. In distant lands I trod. Christ sinner come to God I am on the battlefield for my Lord oh yes I'm on the battlefield for my Lord I am on the battlefield for my Lord for my Lord and I I die. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. Oh, yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Oh, I am on the battlefield for my Lord, for my Lord, and I promise him. We thank you for lending your voices and joining us in our devotion now. We will turn it over to the call, the service with Reverend McShann. Amen. Amen. Good morning to each and every one of you. We greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We're here at the Park Avenue Baptist Church under the direction of Dr. Ellie Campbell worship in truth and in spirit believing that you have tuned in today so that you could experience what god has blessed through this particular ministry dr campbell is on vacation but we're lifting him up in prayer and we continue on in jesus name from the 103rd division of psalms it reads like this bless the lord O my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name bless the lord O my soul and forget not all his benefits who forgiveth all thine iniquities who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfy thy mouth with good things so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Blessed hearing, understanding, and moving upon by faith the word of God. Lord, we thank you for grace and mercy bestowed upon us. Guide us carefully as we move from this phase of worship experience to the next. Anoint the choirs, those that speak, those that pray, those that recite scriptures, and especially, Lord, 
the preach word this morning. We need to hear from you. Thank you for your word and for this opportunity to share the gospel message through this venue. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. announcements uh, for today. Please remember that, uh, and how can we forget, as we continue to shelter at home and during this COVID-19 pandemic, uh, please continue to stay safe and uh, uh, continue to mask and, and practice your social distancing and your hand washing and, and all the, uh, the precautions that uh, uh, our medical experts uh, suggest. And for further information on what's going on in your particular uh, part of the world, you can always refer to your uh, county public health website for an update. As uh, Rev. McShans uh, stated, this is Pastor Campbell's vacation month. He is taking a much needed hiatus and he'll return on the first Sunday of September uh, your deacons and ministerial staff will be in charge of the services going forward uh, for the month as always. Uh, Pastor Campbell, uh, and pay close attention to this announcement, Pastor Campbell plans to lead uh, us uh, uh, after the broadcast in the administering of the Lord's Supper. Uh, what he has asked that you do is use the rest of this month to go ahead and buy your supplies, your grape juice, your grape drink, uh, some crackers, and then after the first Sunday service, after the preaching, then he will uh, lead us in the Lord's Supper. So don't, don't, for, uh, don't forget to do that. Some people are saying, well, do I have to come down to the church? No, you do not. No, you do not. Uh, grab your supplies and we'll be working from home. Amen? All right. Um, 
our program chairs, uh, Brother Sam and Sister Mildred Mason, uh, are requesting that since we will not be meeting in person and live on Family and Friends Day in September, that every member invite uh, some uh, family and friends, invite five to ten people to uh, join us in our streaming service. So uh, have them go online, show them how to do that. Also uh, on our uh, uh, protocol committee, our health protocol committee continues to meet. Uh, we hope to soon have an actual plan for when things open up again and we can assemble together uh, physically. Uh, I don't see that happening anytime soon, but we are putting together a plan. We're planning for that eventuality. So once that plan is put together, we'll be letting uh, the members of Park Avenue know how we'll proceed. So stay tuned for that. Uh, we want to be careful and, and, uh, and, and proceed uh, with everyone in mind. So uh, please uh, keep, that, uh, keep that in mind. Uh, don't forget our prayer calls at 10 o'clock on uh, uh, Monday and Friday mornings. Uh, Brother John DeBose is our prayer leader on Monday mornings, and Deacon Major Carter is our uh, prayer leader on uh, Friday mornings. And lastly, our, our worship service, uh, our midweek services, uh, we will have some teaching uh, by yours truly at that time, and then we'll have our ministers are scheduled to give a short sermon on, on that day, so we'll have teaching and preaching on Wednesday, so we invite you to tune in uh, to our midweek services. As is stated, continue to pray for our pastor, pray for each other, reach out to each other by text or letters, send cards, telephone, whatever you feel comfortable with, but connect, because this is a time that many of our members are not connected, uh, especially those that uh, are kind of in uh, the analog age. They haven't made it to digital, so and, and it's kind of kind of weird for them. So so reach out to to the members, uh, and uh, in the calls I make, people are always glad to uh, to be contacted. So uh, I encourage you to do the same. So uh, God bless you, keep you. Uh, these are our uh, these are our uh, announcements for this week, please govern yourselves accordingly. Amen. The word instructs us that the effectual fervent prayer of righteous folk, saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost, believing that Christ is the only Savior and the only way, that their prayers have significance. And we ought to always pray and not cease. I learned a while ago that, that my prayer time is not necessarily just those marked out occasions in my life where I go to my closet. It's a beautiful thing. But growing up, I learned how to pray navigating through the streets of, of South Central LA. And as I'm going home from Washington High, I'm saying, Lord, bless me, keep me away from the crypts and the brims and the blood. I learned that prayer is my articulating to God my desires and need. Not that I'm informing him about nothing. He already know. But what he does, like a good father, he wants us to appeal to him, to supplicate to him, to speak to him so that we are in tune. Prayer does something for us, does something for me. So we here at the Park Avenue Missionary Baptist Church in Riverside, California, has been instructed and taught in those ways by Dr. L.E. Campbell. I want to pray this morning for those in bereavement. Brother Dan and Sister Gail Smith's nephew, Kevin Clark, passed away on Friday, August 7th, in Huma, Louisiana. And Brother Dan Smith's brother, Moses Charles Deporte Moore, Moore, passed away in Memphis, Tennessee. Keep them lifted up in prayer. One thing that the pandemic has not stopped is the church moving forward and death. Amen, somebody. And everybody ain't dying from COVID. Death is there because we're born in sin, shaped in iniquity, and the and, and we will, we're on that, on this terrestrial, on that dying train. But thank God for Jesus. We have eternal life through him. 
Let's lift up in prayer the family of Deacon Ernest Burns and uh, family of Deacon Booker Hewley. <clears throat> lift up in prayer in bereavement mode for Brother Robert and Sister Frances Lucas and Sister Norma Gaines. Their niece passed away in Choctaw, Oklahoma. Now remember also Brother Tenson, Brother August, and Sister Marguerite Summers and family. Their nephew passed away in New Orleans. And in our community, Elder William T. Mulligan, pastor of the Church of God, <clears throat> the Church of Christ on Lincoln Avenue in Riverside, he passed away Sunday, August 2nd from COVID-19. Keep his immediate family and church family in prayer. The special prayer requests are those uh, Brother Donald and Sister Daryl and Gregory, they asked for a special prayer for their family members who are having health issues. Betty Garrett, Danny Kim, Marty, and Dirk Vandenberg. Also our Park Avenue members, Sister uh, Marnie Smith and Brother John Rockmore, Sister Gail Smith, Sister Annie Newell, and Deacon Edward Madison, and Brother Bill Cross. Pray for the service members. Park Avenue has at least 20 or so that are actively participating in service. And my son is one of them. We heard from him, he's doing well. Things happened over in Beirut, but it did not affect him. He's in Jordan, but they're on alert. So keep those service members. I believe God is able to sustain and keep us through whatever we're dealing with. Pray once more and again for those that are at home and those that are on our convalescent list in the various homes. And let's make sure that we keep our pastor and his daughter, Andrina, lifted up in prayer. Is that all right? So let's go to the throne of grace. Let's talk to the Lord about our particular concerns, and he will give comfort by the power of the Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, for grace and mercy bestowed upon us, we thank you for your undying love towards us. We thank you. And we, right now, we stop and acknowledge the fact that we missed the mark. We have not measured up where we should be by commission or omission. Some things you already told us to do and we neglected to do. We prioritized wrong and we didn't put you first. So that's sin unto us because we know that we are to follow after you hard, heavy, and focused so that we bring glory to you in everything that we do. We ask for forgiveness without reservation cleanse us of all unrighteousness and we thank you for it right now now Lord we mentioned all those individuals on the prayer list those that are sick and afflicted those that are going through things those that are in bereavement mode we know that death is strange every time it comes to us but we thank God for your Holy Spirit we thank God for the Holy Spirit for he brings and gives comfort and we ask you Lord in the name of Jesus that you minister to each sick and afflicted individual. Healing on this side of heaven is what we're asking for. Your divine will take precedence, but healing on this side of heaven is what we're asking for. And those that have what we call lost loved ones, but you have received into your bosom, they have passed on and left us family members and friends a little weary. Give comfort, Lord, in the name of your son, Jesus, we ask for it. And Lord, continue to sustain and keep us in respect to the pandemic and things that are going on. My consolation, Lord, right now, I'll admit it, is that you were not caught off guard here. You knew this. So since you knew about this season of time, you will provide for us. So I'm just going to rest, put all my eggs in one basket and just lean on that trusting that the dynamic power of your spirit moving throughout this nation and world will bring you glory. And we thank you for that. For all individuals that are on the printed page of our prayer list, we lift up to you. You know their particular concerns. There are some unspoken prayer requests also, Lord, within the sound of my voice out there in internet land, out there in cyberspace. Touch each and every person that's praying along with us and watching us online. Strengthen and encourage. And Lord, before we close in our supplication, touch every person within the sound of my voice in the area of their mentality. When we have rich, famous, powerful people saying that they are depressed, or getting depressed. Imagine us that don't have all the kinds of worldly amenities to distract us. 
Depression is running rampant, Lord, but we know that you can keep our mind in perfect peace as long as we're focused on you, your grace, your mercy, your love. In the name of Jesus, Lord, touch our minds. Touch our minds. Allow us not to be depressed through this pandemic era. Allow us to feel your spirit in such a way that we rejoice in you and trust you and allow you to minister to us so that we can be encouraged. This is too strange. This is unusual. This is unorthodox. Help our minds, Lord. We thank you for hearing our appeal, our prayer. We trust you in all things. We trust you in everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. for blessing us in song and truly that with uplifting spirit God is worthy trusting him in all things especially at this time in our finances we come to uh, 
share with you in worship the concept of the giving. We give through tithes and offering. We've been taught at Park Avenue Missionary Baptist Church. And through this unusual time, a lot of people will go, well, does my giving stop? No, it does not. We keep the lights on, we keep the ministry flowing because you are generous enough to recognize your responsibility to share your gifts monetarily for the upbuilding of the kingdom of God. And so we thank God for you. You can share your gifts through on the site that you're on. If you go down to donations, you can look and check that out. Then also you can mail them in. The address is somewhere on the site, on the internet, and also uh, you could bring them by the church. But please, tithes and offerings, sharing gifts, and relationship to financial ministry helps to bless this service and to help the financial arm of the upbuilding of the kingdom of God. Our scripture is 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 through 7. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall also reap sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall also reap bountifully. Every man according as he is perfect in his heart, so let him give. Not grudgingly or necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. And Acts chapter 20, 35b says, Remember the words of the Lord and how he has said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. Looking to the Lord in prayer for the gifts that we are to receive. We thank God for the opportunity to share. Those being without gifts monetarily to share, help them. Encourage them, Lord, by your spirit to be mindful to seize that opportunity when it presents itself once more again. And it's in Jesus' name we pray that you multiply these gifts to do kingdom building work. And it's in his name. Amen. And just before the choir comes, we want to introduce and present one of our associate ministers, Dr. Dwight Jones, <clears throat> faithful member, studious member, a member uh, of the ministerial staff here at Park Avenue Baptist Church. And in respect to that, he's gifted with various talents in relationship to communicating the gospel message with a sound reason, with a upbeat concept of allowing us to feel comfortable hearing the message and at the same time with a serious focused, serious focused attempt to allow the Lord to lead him into hermeneutical way where as he interprets the scripture by the power of the spirit of God, he communicates to us, we are better, we are edified and we are blessed. My friend and my brother will come with the word after the choir has sang a song, and the next voice you will hear will be that of Dr. Dwight Jones.
awesome God. Yes, he is, and he is worthy. Amen. To be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I could have went for another 30 minutes of hallelujah and praise him. Uh, we're not going to prolong the, the hours or the minute. We're going to do what God has assigned us to do as best we can. In Jesus' name, I solicit to change nothing else but your sincere and fervent prayer for me. Amen. Uh, amen. I at least want to tell my granddaughter happy birthday. It's coming this month. Amen. Uh, happy birthdays to my new best friends, uh, Skeet, Deacon, Lynn, Riri, all of those that I grew up with, Dale, having birthday this month, and those who are at Park Avenue that has a birthday this month. God bless you. Happy birthday. <clears throat> amen. We're going to take our text, amen, from Acts chapter 27, verses 39 to 44, and I'm reading for the, from the Apologetics Study Bible. Acts chapter 27, verses 39 to 44. Amen, I just feel in my spirit. I hear some pages turning, but I know that you're at home. You already got it in Jesus' name. Amen. So it reads as follows. When daylight came, uh, they did not recognize the land, but sighted a bay with a beach. They planned to run the ship ashore if they could. After casting off the anchors, they left them in the sea at the same time, loosening the ropes that held the rudders. Then they hoisted the foresail to the wind and headed for the beach. Uh, but they stuck, uh, they struck a sandbar and ran the ship aground. Uh, the bow jammed fast and remained immovable, but the stern began to break up uh, with the pounding of the waves. Uh, the soldier's plan uh, was to kill the prisoners so that no one could swim off and escape. But the centurion, Julius, kept them from carrying out their plan because he wanted to save Paul. So he ordered those who could swim to jump overboard first and get to land. The rest were to follow, some on planks, some on debris from the ship. In this way, all got safely to land. You may be seated. Dear Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, please, Lord, keep and bless your servant, dear Heavenly Father. Touch me, dear Heavenly Father, as I uh, attempt to preach your word, dear Heavenly Father, preferably, dear Heavenly Father, unadulterated in which it is that you have given it to me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Uh, I, the focus of our text, it says that he ordered those who could swim to jump overboard first and get to land. The rest, he said, y'all just jump on in and get some planks and some, debris and some debris from the ship. And this way they all got safe to the land. Our text, our, our sermon, our subject this morning is, how can you get to the shore if you don't know how to swim? Amen. How can you get to the shore if you don't know how to swim? Uh, and how did we get here? How did we get to this point where we're, uh, Paul is on his journey and we know some things that happened and I think it was back in chapter 24 that they had began to, uh, some, some Christians or some Jews from Asia lied on Paul and talked about him coming to stir up and start trouble in the church and everything. And, and so it all began with a lie. Somebody lied on Paul and Paul had went to, purify himself and he himself and some others because he was saying that uh, you can still be a Jew and a Christian uh, 
but not, you're not required to practice, you're not a Judaizer. And so those who say that you, you had to practice Judaism to be a Christian or to be a Christian, you had to still practice uh, Judaism. But Paul was saying that you can still be who you are uh, as a Christian. And sometimes in our lives, we have gotten, uh, our culture has gotten a bad rap. And so uh, even down through the years, uh, from the time of slavery, when slaves got the, able to read <clears throat> and they was given a false doctrine or Eurocentric approach to scripture, but somebody messed around and taught them how to read. And when they got to read and they realized that uh, what the slave masters and such were telling them, this is, does not quite line up to the word of God that we knew in Africa. Uh, and so they began to, to be able to see the word, speak the word, and realize that they had basically been lied to. Amen? And, and so when you and so as time moved on, even in our culture and even in our preaching, uh, because we're an excitable, pe uh, uh, excitable people, <clears throat> and we, we like excitement. We, we like third day morning preaching. We, we like to tune it up every now and then and hear it that way. Uh, but that has been kind of downcast even in seminary teaching that you should stand and teach a certain way uh, according to a, another culture that's not your own. Every now and then you got to get loud to wake folk up. Um, amen. In the word. Every, every now and then you got to holler at somebody. Uh, we, like, we, we, we like call and response. Uh, amen. And so, uh, so he was telling them in the, in the temple. So they said, well, hey, you, you, you stirring up trouble. Uh, and even in the, the, the church and the culture that we live, people say well, it don't take all of that to preach the word. Well, sometimes it does. Uh, sometimes it does take all of that. And so what had happened is that they had uh, filed some charges falsely against Paul. And it's funny, they got this guy, Tertullian, from, uh, he was a Roman citizen, smart guy. He was an orator. And so and that, the, uh, Tertullian means little third. So they went and got a third party to come in and talk to Felix about what was going on with Paul. And he began to make Felix look good and saying that, I know that you understand. And, and you all, well, Felix was kind of a love. A uh, little mobster, so to speak. He, he wasn't no joke. Didn't like nobody. Killed a couple of folk in his family uh, because he couldn't have his way. Plus, he was a crook. Kept Paul uh, locked up for two years. Had him to come back. And Paul was telling him, according to scriptures, uh, about Jesus Christ and how he should live. And he said, man, you're talking, you talking too strong to me. I can't take that. Go away. I'll call you back. And, but he was hoping that Paul would bring him some cash. Uh, bribe him to, to, to set him free. Well, Robert was against the law, but he said, you know what, I'll do it anyway. I don't have anybody to question me. And so Paul had gotten in this trouble. But, uh, but what is interesting about this book to me uh, is the writer Luke and the relationship him and Paul had. Uh, and it was in Acts chapter 16 uh, that uh, Luke includes himself uh, in the conversion of Lydia. And he said in and she told us, she said, if, I'm, if you consider me a Christian, and Paul said, well then, she said, stay with, stay with me. And Luke said, and so she asked us to stay with him. So from the beginning, that's where he inserted himself in the we part of Paul's life. But then the friendship was so cool and so close. Uh, when he wrote to Timothy, he said, only Luke is with me. So from that conversion to the end, he stayed with him. He, so every now and then, I just believe you got to have a friend that'll stick with you when other folk won't. Uh, every now and then, you got to be able to just call somebody uh, when things ain't right. Uh, you might find yourself on the side of a road and, and you, got, you got one bar left on your phone. Uh, and like you already called on the Lord, but you got to be able to push a button and call somebody. Can you, can you come get me? And trust that they'll be there. You got to have a friend uh, to be able to tell you that, you know what, you're talking crazy today. Uh, you need to bring it down. That's a, that's a friend. In the midst of all of these things that was going on, he said, only Luke is still with me. And so he had been there with him. And so it got to the point where he had went to Felix and went to Agrippa and, uh, and he had pleaded his case. And he had pleaded his case and then found out that Paul is with him on this journey to Rome. God had told him, you're going to go to Rome. Uh, you got to preach to the Gentiles uh, and you got to preach to kings. Paul had told, I believe in Romans, that, 
uh, he had wrote a letter saying he wanted to go to Rome and to Spain. And that was intent. And so he was going to go, but he ended up going, but not the way that I believed that he had imagined in his mind. Some of us, uh, I took the scenic route from school. When I got out of, the, out of high school, I joined the Army and took some classes here and there. And, and I hear young folks say, well, you know, I'm too... Uh, I'm, I'm 30, I'm 35, I'm too old to go to school. I, I'm still going to school. Uh, and I, I'm encouraging my grandkids to go to school. Uh, sometimes it, it didn't happen the way that we wanted to happen. We, the Lord gave us a scenic route. Sometimes we try to strive uh, that corporate ladder of stratification and we want to get there and get to the top because of our education, know-how, and who we know. You might make it there, but not the way you think. Uh, sometimes... Uh, you say, well, why did it take you so long? Maybe folk was lying on you in the background that you didn't know. Uh, folks was hiding your application at the bottom. Folks was doing things you know about, but you stay steadfast in what you were doing for the Lord. The friendship uh, that Luke uh, and Paul had, and, and it's uh, interesting to me that he talked about Paul and Silas and, and Barnabas, and he talked about friendships that Paul had with other people. But he never wrote about the friendship that he had with Paul himself. He was just there with him. And sometimes you need to be a friend just to be there. Uh, when, things are just, uh, when things are going good and when things are not going so well. And, and so when it's, it's sometimes you need a ride or die friend. Uh, he was not, Luke was not uh, in trouble. Luke was not uh, on trial. But yet he boarded that ship along with his friend. And so he, he did so, he did so. He, he, he went and he got on the ship uh, with his friend. And so throughout all of these arguments and everything, sidebar, sidebar, real quick. I, I, was, I was reading the scripture and it was, it was interesting to me that I found. It's not prophetic, but it is interesting. In uh, Acts chapter 12, uh, when you get a chance, look at it. And it's about Herod's death. It was just so interesting to me that Herod got angry with the Tyrians and the Sidonians uh, and they presented themselves before him and, and, and he had won a battle and so they had asked for, for peace and because the country was supplied with food from his table. And so on the appointed day, he dressed up in his robe and he began to talk about the things that he did and the people began to shout, it's the voice of God and not of man and, and so and, and Herod was talking about who, how cool he was and how, how tough he was and, and all of a sudden, it said, and once an angel of the Lord struck him because he did not give the glory to God, he became infected with worms and died. Amen. I ain't watched the news this morning, but I watched it the other day. Uh, amen. It's not prophetic, but it's in the Bible. I, I'm, I'm just saying. I just found that to be, to be interesting. Uh, that it was. So, amen. So, they had boarded a ship. They had, he told you know what? He said, I've, I've appealed myself to Caesar. And Felix and Agrippa and them, and they, they said, if he, had a, he had not appealed to Caesar after he gave his dissertation, his oratorical thesis, uh, he said, well, he could have been free if he had not appealed to Caesar. But they were still trying to set him up, want him to go back to Jerusalem. Now they were still trying to kill him no matter what. And it's amazing. This is almost a five-year span. Span of time, two years there with Felix, three years, and he trying to, uh, and they still trying to ramrod him, but God gave him favor. So even when he was in custody, he was free for his people to come and, and minister him, and, and he was able to preach the word to those who were around him. No matter how dark the situation, no matter where we might find ourselves, even in the midst of a bad situation, we got two things. We got a testimony, we got the glory of God. God will keep you in the midst of where you are. All you got to do is glorify him in the midst of where you are. Uh, you say, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling, whether it's on my job, I'm struggling at home, I'm struggling in the community, I, uh, I'm, just, I'm just struggling. Uh, but it's okay. I uh, say that the only kind of days, my, my good day is a bad day. And so if you just think it's going so bad that your good day is a bad day, you still have room to glorify God in your day. Makes no difference whether you got to catch and you get along or, or whether your mind is slipping. If you just take that moment in the midst of, and you know what? I just have to glorify God in this moment that I'm in. And so 
they had boarded the, the ship. Paul said, hey, you know what? I don't think we're going to make it. He said, you know what? The wind is, is kind of tossing nigh and all of these things is going on. And, uh, and if we don't be careful, uh, it's going to be heavy loss to the cargo and also to our lives. And so they said, well, we know a little bit more than you. But sometimes experience trumps education. Paul experienced traveling in the wintertime. And he had been on three missionary journeys. And he said, you know what? I've, I've been cast into the sea. And so a day and night out in the sea. So I know it's rough. He said, but if y'all just wait a little while. And sometimes it'll make you, people make you think you don't know what you're talking about because you don't have a piece of paper uh, or some letters behind your name. Uh, but every now and then, some things that you've been through will qualify you uh, to have an understanding about what's really right in life. Uh, and so... He said, well, uh, can't listen to you. We, we got to go. Say, hey, all right, it's on you. Uh, I know where I'm going, but you don't have to struggle the way that you do. And so when God has blessed you, never be ashamed of the gift that God has given you. Even in those, make no difference how young, how old people, when you're young, folk don't want to listen to you. When you're old, folk don't want to listen to you. Uh, but sometimes you got to stand and say what's right in the name of the Lord. And so then, they ignored his advice, and they, uh, they went on and did what they had to do. And so the, 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 the crux of the lesson, because they gave him his advice. He gave advice based on experience. But we look in verse 22, chapter 26, and it says, Now I urge you, the Lord is talking to Paul. He said to take courage, because there will be no loss of any of your lives, but only the ship. And he said, for this night an angel of God, uh, he said, of the God that I belong to and serve stood by me. And he said, don't be afraid, Paul. You must stand before Caesar. Uh, and look, God has graciously given you all those who are selling with you. Therefore, take courage, man, because I believe God that it will be just the way that it was told me. However, we must run aground into a certain island. And, and so he's, he's telling them. And God said that he has graciously given those around you to him. That means your enemies, your foes, and your friends. That everyone, no matter where you are, uh, and there's haters in the game, but God said he's given them to you. But to you to do what? Uh, not to abuse them uh, when you come into your own. Uh, that, you would, that you would witness to them, show them the love of Christ, show them the love of the Lord. Show them and demonstrate to them uh, and that's really what Paul did. He had demonstrated to them. And, it's, and we're going to talk about that a little bit in, in Scripture. So he says, it's going to be danger. He said, the, the ship is going to tear up. There's going to be loss of cargo, but not loss of life. And so I've graciously given them who are around you. How do you demonstrate your grace when God has given folk around you that you don't like? I take that back. Folk that don't like you. And so... We, we have a life and we live a life that says, you know what, I'm going to treat you based upon how you treat me. Uh, that's how many marriages fail sometimes. Say, so I act right. Say, so you know what, love the uh, women obey your, wives obey your husbands. Oh, I can do that. Husbands, love your wives like Christ loved the church. And then you hear the echo, well, if you love me like Christ loved the church, then I treat you better. That's not what the text says. Right? That's, that's not what the text says, not what it meant. And so we don't treat people based on how they treat us. We treat them based upon how the Lord has blessed us to be able to treat them. And so we have to be able to stand fast no matter how we feel and no matter much what we want to do. There's sometimes folks that got on your last nerve and you know you didn't sit down and you say, you know what, I love the Lord. But right now, if it wasn't for jail and Jesus, I would probably just knock you out. Uh, amen. I, I know Jesus ain't going to leave me, but I can't do too much jail. Uh, amen. Uh, my father gave me that advice. He always told me, he said, boy, you know what? Don't go. He said, if you go to jail, don't call me. And what's interesting, I was talking with a friend of mine the other day, and he had called. I hadn't spoke to him in years, and he said, uh, he said, man, we got a call up. He told me one of the principals had died. I said, I'm sorry to hear that. And he said, uh, man, he said, I went to jail. I said, you went to jail? He said, yeah, man, we got to talk about it. He said, but I went to jail, and uh, a couple of gangbangers in there tied suit up. He said, man, I ain't never been to jail. What do I do? And the guy said, man, they home. This is what you do. You go to judge. You say this and that. Right, so he ended up calling his mother. And uh, his mother and dad came to get him. He said, well, why did you call your daddy? 
because he told me when I was little two things. He said, two things don't you do. Don't get a girl pregnant and them, don't know it. And if you go to jail, don't call me. So he told me don't call him, and I didn't. All right? But his mama didn't know he got the message, so he, he got it. And so even in the, the midst of, of where we are, we have to demonstrate the love of God to even those that we don't like and those that don't like us. And so there will not be a, a loss of life. And they had been out uh, in, the, in the waters and in these waves for about 14 days, and it was about 11 days that they did not have anything to eat. Uh, and so what happened is when they came up on the barge, it was interesting uh, that some of the sailors tried to escape from the ship. Now, these are sailors, and most of the sailors, I believe, know how to swim. And they let down the skiff or the little small boat uh, next to the ship. And so what they was going to do is, is that they was going to get on the little ship, cut it off, and they was going to roll uh, in the land. So they say, on the dry land, they say, we ain't staying out here and just go suffer. They say, not going to do that. So we, we go home. Then Paul said, but unless these men, Stay in the ship. You cannot be saved. So then the soldiers, they cut the, uh, the rope that was holding the little boat, and it just drifted away. And so they had prayed for daylight, and daylight came. And today was the 14th day. So they had not eaten. They had been waiting and, and going without food and, and, and had not eaten anything. And then Paul says, you know what? He said, therefore, I urge you to take uh, some food. For this has to do with your survival, since not a hair will be lost from the head of any of you. And so after he said this, and he had taken some bread, and he gave thanks to God in the presence of them. Uh, so nobody had eaten, whether they were seasick or whatever. There was food on, but they started throwing cargo and stuff over on the boat to keep the boats lifted up so it could keep moving. Uh, but there was some bread, there was some food there. And Paul blessed it. And I believe Paul prayed a prayer uh, before them that they would see, and they was encouraged because he said after, after the Paul ate, they became encouraged and they ate. And so demonstrating, and I got to say this, they was 14 days without food. You got some folk that can't stay home 14 days with food. Folk say, I'm about to die, it's 14 days, I can't do this. Uh, and you got folk going around acting crazy and say, I can't stay in the house. Well, what you missing? You got food, you got some water, you, uh, you, got, the, you got some air conditioning going on, what's wrong? I can't stand it. Well, well why not? Okay, well then, go 14 days without eating and walk around outside. Which one would you prefer? Uh, so we have that, that kind of a jacked up mentality. And so we're going to get closer to the text. And so uh, they were shipwrecked. And so what had gotten me interesting about the text, and it says that the bow to sandbar, the bow had struck uh, a sandbar, it ran aground, and then the soldiers planned to kill the prisoners so that no one would swim off. But the centurion, Judas, the one had God had given Paul favor with, kept them from carrying out their plan because he wanted to save Paul. Sometimes folks will try to uh, organize your demise, but God always has somebody that you might not even know about that has put them there and given you favor with, just for you. All these folks. Now you got 200 and 76 folk on this ship. And so, I don't know how many prisoners there were, but they said, we go kill these prisoners because uh, they had been known, Herod had did that when Peter had escaped and he got there from jail and he said he had killed those, he found those who were on guard and he killed them. So they know uh, that if you let prisoners escape, somebody go die. But Paul so ordered that, uh, he wanted to save Paul and so, Junior said, those who can swim, jump overboard. Now, that kind of got me. Because I can just imagine, now, everybody obviously couldn't swim. So I'm standing at the back of the boat. <laughs> Folk diving in, doing swan dives and jack knives all in the water and everything. And I'm standing in the back saying, uh, can you swim? And the guy said, mm-mm. Can you swim? Mm-mm. He looked at me and said, can you swim? I said, I can dog paddle. I don't know if dog paddling go get it. And so now I'm figuring out, he done told everybody that can swim to jump in. Now the rest of y'all grab something. Now I'm trying to figure out, I see water now. Have you ever been in a situation where you know you couldn't do something? And you had to figure out how I'm going to get it done? So these folks back here, I'm having conversation with folks saying, 
I, now you got some ways the wind is blowing and things are going on and like you want me to grab something and hold on to it and just it's automatically going to take me in. Uh, so I, I don't know. And my question remains, how do you get to the shore if you don't know how to swim? And so he just said, grab a plank and grab something that flows. I, I ain't never did that before. So how am I supposed to figure out in my mind that I'm going to get to shore? It's amazing. First of all, is that uh, Paul had told him, don't be afraid. And so we have to have the mentality, even if we don't understand. Uh, we see a situation, and I, and I know in my mind that I can't do it. I cannot be afraid. Uh, and sometimes it's, it says that when people drown, they drown because they're afraid, and they panic. Uh, amen. Had that experience once. Amen. I was a little kid, 11 or 12 years old. Amen. And those uh, in my neighborhood that might be watching this, if y'all see Tony Reese, tell him I'm looking for him. Amen. Uh, so we had a little pool in the neighborhood. And so he said, well, I'm going to just take you across the pool. And so he took me across the pool. Well, he didn't. He got halfway in the middle of the pool where it was a seven-foot hole in the pool, and he just left. And I said, what am I supposed to do now? Uh, amen. And so that must have been, it, instead of seven feet, it must have been 27 feet of water. I can remember hitting the bottom, and I would jump as fast as I could, and my body would come up. Uh, went down three or four times, you know, say one time, I ain't no no one and two and three. So I'm struggling. Tommy Day was sitting on the side. He said, hey, he can't swim. Eddie Williams jumped in and pulled me to the side. Uh, and then he charged me 20 cents for saving my life. <laughs> Amen. I'm going to give you another 20 cents, Eddie Williams. Amen. So uh, how do you get there? How do you get there? And you're struggling. And you're trying to figure out. I say, don't fear. If somebody had said, relax, and the next time you come up, just jump forward, right? And I would have been right there on the edge, but nobody told me that. And so sometimes in life, let me tell you, when things catch up with us, don't fear. Saw a little clip the other day on Facebook. This little baby was sitting down. This little puppy was biting his toe. And the little baby was hollering, and the little puppy was biting his toe, and he got mad, and he grabbed the puppy by the ear, and he bit him. Right? And the little dog got to, er, er, right? But he let his toe go. And then the, the little puppy, like he was going to go jump on him. And the little boy slapped the dog and the little puppy ran away. Some people are just fearless. Some are just fearful. Uh, this little baby is fearless. And so we have to remember that uh, we don't have to fear. Uh, you do know why people uh, fail at things? It's not because they're afraid of failure. It's because they're afraid of success. Because you can do absolutely nothing and fail. That's nothing to be afraid of. Uh, but when you have a, a mission, you have a responsibility, and God has spoken to you, and it's like, well, I'm fearful. I don't want to fail. Well, you don't have to be afraid to fail. Just do absolutely nothing, and you'll fail. Some people are afraid of success. And we're afraid of being successful with the Lord. The Lord say, tell somebody about the goodness of the Lord. I can't, Lord, because they're messing with me at work. The Lord said, tell somebody. At the grocery, I don't know, Lord, people don't want to wear their mask and all of this stuff. I don't, I don't want to get to wear yours and tell somebody about the goodness of the Lord. Uh, David didn't fear Goliath. Uh, he had never fought a giant before, but it was because he trusted in the Lord. Uh, how do you get to the other side? How do you get to the shore if you can't swim? You have to not fear and trust in what God has called you to do. Uh, the Hebrew boys, they, uh, they, they were not afraid. Uh, because they trusted in the Lord. Uh, so when he said, well, you know what you can throw? He said, if, even if we perish, God has already, and we have to live a God has already life. No matter what you have done or what you try to do, God has already blessed me. I'm not worried or fearful about the things that you would want to do. And so when you're not afraid, then you have to trust. You have to trust. You have to the trust. Uh, David trusted God when he was acting crazy and foaming at the mouth. He had to trust God that they thought he was even crazy to get away. Uh, the widow that, that said she was going to make this little food for the cakes for her and her son. And the prophet came by and said, just make some for the preacher first. Right? And she said, well, I'm going to trust you that the meal barrel just doesn't get empty. Uh, have you ever been in a situation, even in your life, you say, you know what? I, I have to trust in the Lord. I, I don't know how it's going to happen, but I know I'm going to trust him. Yeah. Folks are afraid right now. Uh, and 
COVID ain't no problem until it hits your house. It's, it's just another pandemic. It's just another virus until it hits home. Uh, but we don't sit around and be afraid in the midst of a pandemic. We have to what? Trust in the Lord. Uh, we're not fearful. Uh, I don't have to worry about man. I, the, when I read that scripture that uh, do not fear who, am, who can destroy the body, but fear him who can destroy the body and cast your soul into hell. And that, that gave me some, some upcomings in my spiritual walk. Uh, because no matter how they did not appreciate me talking about the Lord on my job, even though I took my Bible to work and every now and then I would open up and read some scripture that got my, caught my attention. I said, yes, Lord. Uh, and they did not like that. They said, well, why is he always reading the Bible? Why is he always happy and upbeat? Uh, because I trust in the Lord. Uh, there's nothing that you can do to me to make me fear. When I first came to California back in now, the Southern California, not California, came to Southern California and I was uh, living here in Moreno Valley on March Air Force Base and I would just ride down through LA in my blue car. I'm riding in Crip territory and all over the place in blood territory and I, by myself. I'm just riding around seeing the city. I don't know where no gangs are. Uh, and somebody stopped me one day. I was trying to, I knew, uh, it was a Sunday and I had left church and I knew I had to somehow get back to East and I had to hit across Broadway somewhere and get on the 10 and the 110 to come this way. And so I'm just riding around in circles. Ain't nobody on the street. Car pulled up. Hey. I say, what's up? They say, where are you going? I said, I'm trying to get the freeway. Oh, okay. <laughs> Let's go over here. I don't know who it was. I ain't seen them since. Uh, didn't have any fear. Didn't have enough sense to have any fear. Uh, but we have to trust that God will keep us. And so we say, well, well what about the amazing grace of God? What about the, the saving grace of God? We have to trust that, that as God has blessed us and God has kept us, those who don't know him will fear him. Uh, they need to fear him righteously, uh, but they will fear a pandemic. And this is just gets me, and I'm getting ready to shut this down. Why and how can you fear a man who's never asked God for forgiveness and says that he's a different kind of genius, uh, amen, and that uh, there's something about him and folk around him just believe the hype. Uh, God has either blinded the eyes and the ears of those uh, who two years ago, three years ago, that had said he was a misogynist, racist, and a bigot, but now he's the best thing that ever put on a tie. Uh, one that's too long sometimes. Amen. Uh, but what we have is that we have the, the goodness of God and we have nothing to be afraid of. The question is, how do you get to the shore if you don't know how to swim? Right. You have to trust in the Lord. Don't fear. And we trust in the Lord that God will keep us and God will uh, maintain us. And the reason that we know that is because we just like Paul, we had a conversation with the Lord one day. Uh, I was lost in my sin and I was undone on my way to hell and somebody told me about this man named Jesus. I, I didn't know. I, I was a good guy and I did most things good and I, and I kind of minded my mother and I remember the, 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 the stories that my father told me of how to act and how to treat folk. But I was on my way to hell. And when somebody told me then I realized I had a, I had a real life conversation one day in the middle of my living room. And somebody would talk about all the words of what Paul said and the Bible said and I opened up my Bible the big, the big table Bible, I think it was about this big, and I, and I opened it up, and I said, all I want to know is what Jesus said. Right. And so I read the, the red letters, because they said those are the words of Jesus. Right. And, and I read the words of Jesus, and I began to feel that the Lord was speaking to me. Yeah. And I said, well, I don't want to go to hell, and being nice ain't going to keep you out of, it ain't going to keep you out of the nice side of hell. Amen. It's just going to get you in hell. So, so amen. So I began to read and I, and I said, I understand, Lord, that you want me to be saved. So I confess. First, I confess my sins. And, and then I said, because I don't want to go to hell. And then I realized, I said, I need to confess Christ as my Lord. Uh, and I believe that God raised him from the dead. The question is, is that what you believe? The problem they had with Paul and Paul never said anything about Jesus dying. He, they had a problem with the resurrection of Christ. And so the problems with the Sadducees and the, Pharise and the Pharisees, and he knew there was more Sadducees in the crowd, and he began to tell them because they didn't believe in the resurrection. And the thing is, he said that they had a problem with nothing I did until I told them. 
about the risen Savior, Jesus Christ. And so when he went to them and they said, he's talking about this man named Jesus who died that Paul says he's still living. And they had a problem with him living because they didn't believe in the resurrection. You can believe he died, but if you don't believe that God raised him from the dead, you just as lost as Felix and Agrippa. So therefore, what we have to do is that believe that we serve a risen Savior. Amen? That God is an awesome God. And this day is the day that you say, well, I, I trust him and, and I believe. I, I think I believe. I've been in church all my life, but sometimes it's not going to get it. So I believe in that third day morning resurrection, that, that early on Sunday morning that God raised him from the dead. And I'm so glad he did because when he raised him from the dead, the story is not over. Because I believe he's coming back again. He's going to crack that eastern sky and we go see him. And he's gonna, we're going to be caught up. Those who are dead first and those who are alive are going to be caught up after them. And somebody say, why the dead first? They got six more feet to go before you do. So they got to come up and so we will rise after them. And I'm so glad God is who he is. Amen. Amen. God is an awesome God and he's worthy. How do you get to show if you can't swim? You got to trust in the Lord. Amen. Amen. The choir is going to sing. Hallelujah. Amen. says if you confess with your mouth and believe Lord Jesus that God has raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved. The hard man believes on the right with the confession of the mouth. Ooh, hallelujah. Just had a had an octane moment and drew a blank in Jesus name. If we confess Jesus Christ as our Lord and believe that God has raised him from the dead we shall be saved. And so if that's you today then I encourage you and it has, makes no difference how long you've been in church and, and how long mama been in church and, and granny and been. What about you? It's a personal thing. And so if you confess him as your Lord and your Savior. And this is really a convenient time uh, because we really, this is a time we really don't know what's going to happen next. Uh, amen. But I trust in the Lord. Uh, and I have to, I got to give 45th some credit. He said it's just going to float away. Uh, when God gets ready, it's going to float away. Uh, amen. Uh, pandemic did not catch God by surprise, and God's grace did not catch you by surprise. Amen.
So you made that confession of faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And the Bible says that you are saved. Uh, and if you want to know uh, and talk to someone, you can call a church here at Park Avenue. If you're not in the area, that you can be able to call somebody, call a deacon, call a preacher, call a church in your area and say, did the preacher say that if I confess Jesus Christ, I'll be saved. Now, what do I do next? And you find yourself in a Bible believing and Bible teaching church. And just let me say this. Every church that's opening up on uh, the World Wide Web these days because it's convenient uh, is convenient. And Satan uh, has access as well. So pay attention. Open them for your Bible and go to Scripture uh, when somebody jumps on screen and tell you they got something for you uh, outside of the pandemic and God's waiting to bless you with uh, material things and blessings. So be mindful and be careful. Uh, amen. And listen to the truth of God's word. Uh, you having pastors and preachers telling people just only crowd into the church. Uh, we trust in God. Well, I'm trusting God. You have more sense than that uh, in Jesus name that would tell folk and people are susceptible to disease and sickness as it is. And when God says the time is right, that's when we'll show up. Amen. Amen. If all minds are clear, hallelujah, in Jesus' name, that we present you faultless before the presence of God is exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forevermore. And all the saints of God said, Amen. Hallelujah. Amen.